AQA, A level physics, Rutherford scattering. This bit of the specification, very much GCSE, doesn't go very much beyond GCSE, but a bit of a reminder, a bit of an introduction. The important thing is how our model of the atom has changed over time and is changing over time. Uh, the ancient Greeks, various civilizations have taken turns to be the cleverest people around. Uh, the ancient Greeks thought that there were four elements. Everything in the whole world was made up of just earth, air, fire and water. Uh, even people were a mixture of just those four elements. They were elemental. They are what we and everything is made out of is what they thought at the time. They didn't do experiments. They just sat around and, uh, and had a chat and drank ouzo and ate kebabs and talked about stuff. Yeah, they thought there were four elements. Uh, this guy, Democritus. Now, if you look at big rocks and things and they can be worn down and you end up with sand, which is tiny, tiny particles. Uh, and this guy suggested that all matter was made up of tiny, indivisible, indestructible particles, particles that you couldn't break down anymore. Uh, now, the Greek word for to slice is tomos. Uh, and so if you can't slice it, if you can't divide it, then it is atomic. And that's where the word atom comes from. So this guy apparently was the first guy to imagine that everything was made up of these tiny, indestructible little particles, Democritus. We learned a lot in the years after that. Uh, by the 1800s, we'd realise that there were lots and lots of elements, many more elements. Uh, this guy here, John Dalton, made uh, important contributions. He said atoms of different elements vary in size, mass and properties and that each element had its own type of atom. Uh, early 1900s, J.J. Thompson. Now, J.J. Thompson discovered that if you had atoms, you could take away something negative and you would be left with something positive. And that suggests that atoms are made of positive and negative stuff. And the negative, tiny little negative things, we call them electrons. Um, he didn't call them that, he called them corpuscles or something. But uh, he came up with the plum pudding model of the atom, which is this ball of positive sponge, very light, airy, fairy sponge with these tiny little negative bits in it. And that's the plum pudding model. Uh, so we get to Ernest Rutherford, and he did a series of experiments, well, with some of his students, Geiger and Marsden, uh, looking at alpha particles and the properties of alpha particles. And one of the experiments was firing alpha particles at very, very, very thin gold and seeing what happened, seeing where the alpha particles ended up using something called a, a scintillation screen that you could move around to different angles. Uh, and something happened that the plum pudding model can't explain. This is why the model evolves. You come up with evidence that the old model can't explain, so you need a new model. And basically what happened was a, a small number of alpha particles were deflected. They didn't carry on in a straight path and a very, very small number actually bounced back, back in the direction that they came from. And so we needed a new model of the atom. And so Rutherford's model of the atom, there you go, straight through, nowhere near the nucleus. Some of the alpha particles got close to the nucleus and because alphas are positive and the nucleus is positive, then there's a repulsive force, so it's deflected. And then a very, very small number approach the nucleus head on and their kinetic energy changes to electrical potential energy. They get very close and then they come back again. OK, uh, this is called the distance of closest approach. Uh, a very small number approach the nucleus head on and they were pushed back in the direction that they came. 
is a, an excellent uh, FET animation. All of them are excellent. Uh, Rutherford scattering, check it out. Uh, remember, the size of an atom is about 10 to the minus 10 meters, about. Uh, atoms are different sizes, of course, but remember 10 to the minus 10 for an atom. Uh, nuclei about 10 to the minus 15. Okay, remember those. So a nucleus is much, much smaller than an atom. If, if the atom was the size of a football stadium, then the nucleus would be about the size of a smarty, a smarty in the middle of a football stadium. Uh, and our model of the atom has continued to develop uh, people like uh, Niels Bohr uh, and then uh, Schrodinger and Heisenberg and people after that. Our model of the atom is continuing to develop as more discoveries are made, as new models are needed.